Yarr! Hello mateys, how you doing? This is Captain Blue here, over at CGPirates.com. Now, I'm sorry about the background noise, that is the sound of a heater. Because old Captain Blue's ship, Central Heating, has gone. And uh, I'm having to use space heaters, just for the day. So, please bear with. Now then, let's get straight to it. So I'll just hit F4, and that's just so that I can see the edged polygons. Now, if your application doesn't do that, just look in the menu for how you can view edged faces. And I'm going to click this and do a ring select. And then, by doing that, if I just go to my move gizmo and lift it a little bit, there we go, and we get this nice raised piece going all round here, like that. See? Now, on the inside of my ship, or boat, or whatever, I need a seat. Now, do you remember our little guy that we built earlier? Because I certainly do. And if I go over here to my biped, I'll just bring him up in height until he gets to about 180. Now, as we see, our rowing boat, or she's quite large, but that's fine, because it needs to be fairly large, and it means there's enough room, really, for maybe two sets of um, seats. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, and in my modelling tab, with my boat selected, it's a boat, not a ship, remember, I'll use swift loop, and just go straight to the middle here, like this, And then again, I'm going to do it just here. Okay. Right, and that'll give us everything we need. Okay, just to get this kind of working. Now, what I'm going to do next, okay, it may not make a lot of sense to you, because I bet you're thinking, well, if I'm doing a seat, right, then I can click here, and I can click here, and I can just hit bridge, which is here. Okay, and there you go, I've made a seat. Yeah, and that's fair enough but it's not really kind of detailed in the way that I want it right so what I actually want which may sound silly but it's kind of the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to extrude both of these and I'm going to extrude them by local normal just grab that like so and just bring them straight out and click tick and then I'm going to adjust them so I'm just going to bring them down like that Okay, just so they look like they're kind of flat on. Okay, then I'm going to use my scale tool just on this axis and just flatten them. And we get this here. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're playing, let's pretend that we've had a piece of wood nailed just across here. Now, I'm going to straighten up the sides as well. So I'm just going to select here and here and over here and over here. Okay, let's just scale those in. There we go. Okay, that's not bad. Not bad. It's great. So, what I want to do now is go to my standard tools and I'm just going to make myself a box. Now, for this to work, because look, where is it? Nowhere. I've got to have auto grid turned on. So, box, auto grid. But you can just make one anyway and just put it wherever you want. But that's just how I'm doing it. And if you look, if I just drag these across, it's not quite right, is it? Because my normal isn't quite right. Well, that's okay. Let's just uh, save ourselves the bother of that as well. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to be quite cunning. So I'm going to right-click and with my main boat selected, okay, which I'm today going to rename Thanks, Master Zap Boat One, because he reminds me, you see in my head, to use naming conventions. I'm going to just grab this polygon here and this polygon here, okay, and I am going to just turn this subdivision surface off and this off, and I want detach and I'm going to detach it as a clone and as an element why because then I've still got the old polygon underneath it okay so what can I do with this well I can flip them 
Okay, so now they're facing the other way. Now, if I select mine by border or select all the edges around it, and I've got them both selected now, I can just hold shift and drag straight up like that. And yar, lo and behold, what's happening here? I've got kind of an extrude going on, but not quite. And then if I just click cap, it closes it. Well, what was the point of that, you may be thinking to yourself? Well, allow me to demonstrate, okay? Because that's my job. So, if I go to border and then do basically a marquee select straight down the middle. Now, I can't really do it that way actually. What I'll do is I'll select here, at this edge, and this edge, and I'll do a ring. And you'll notice it's only selected those four because this isn't really part of the boat. It's like a subset, but it's not really part of it, if you know what I mean. Okay, so if I now do a connect, it gives me that edge there in the middle. Excellent. I like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to chamfer that. So I've got my chamfer tool just here, and I'm just going to give it a small chamfer, like so. And then what I can do is just go into here and select that edge and if I go into this one as well, that edge and I shall do a ring, hit delete. Okay, now I've got a space in the middle, so I'm just going to use my loop tool there, my border tool, whatever. I've just got control held down so I can multiple select. There we go. And then I can cap. And they're all shut. Okay, you're probably saying, why? Well, remember what I said. Okay, we're going to make it look a little bit better, so I'm going to select that one and that one, do a bridge, and that one, and that one, and do a bridge, and then, for extra cleverness points, I'm going to double click that, and that, and do a control backspace, and I'm going to double click that, and that, with control held, and do another backspace. And as you can see now we've got a small gap underneath where it's kind of holding the seat in. Okay. And what we can do as well, just to make it look like there's, you know, maybe it's been not quite in the right place, maybe it's, you know, a seat that's been added later, whatever, we can just move our plank a little bit like that. Lovely. Okay, so what about this end over here? Okay, because normally you have someone kind of sitting down this end, don't you? I don't know what they're doing, maybe they're just looking at the lovely weather or whatever. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make myself just a piece that kind of goes in here. Now, I've got a couple of options for how I can do it, but I think the best way that I can possibly do it would be to select the parts that I'm going to need. So I'm going to select these. And if you're worried about moving them, okay, just use a select tool rather than a select to move. So in my case that would be this. Okay, and that makes it a little bit easier for you. And how big do I need this? Well, let's make it big enough that we can put things on, yeah? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and just drag it. And it'll ask if I want to clone it to an object or to an element. I'm going to clone it to an element. Yar. <laughs> I love saying yar, by the way. It's just, if you're wondering, you know, am I balmy or something? Uh, I just like saying the word yar. I've gone all this, I've gone to this, all, all this effort, I've got myself to party web suite, so I'm going to say yar. Right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tidy this up, because it's a little bit of a mess, yeah? So, there's a couple of ways I can do this. And I think the easiest way, to be quite honest for me, is going to be doing cut. So, I've got my edge, and here's my cut tool here. I can just go straight across. And then on the other side, straight across like that. Okay, take some time to get used to the cut tool if you've never used it before, because it can be uh, a strange wee beastie, but that's pretty much 
how it works see and I'm going to if you find your move tool kind of moving around like crazy okay just select some polygons and hit Z and it'll zoom in on those and then you'll be able to center from there all right well that's kind of nice so let's get these edges at the bottom so I'm just going to double click there and double click here and I'm going to use my scale tool now you may notice that when I did that okay it moved these up to here like that and that's not really what I'm wanting so I think a better way of doing this would be perhaps to get my front on viewport just here okay and I'm gonna get rid of this one over here on the right so sorry my little friend but you have to go goodbye and that should just leave me the one there it is there okay and now with this one selected go to edge mode what I want to do is I want to kind of slice it all the way down so I'm going to use a slice plane and if you look that's down here so I'm going to move the center of it just to inside here okay this is a lovely powerful tool not many people use this anymore but they should now I'm going to use my rotate tool and just get it in a good position so about there and I'm going to use my angle snap just turn it off and that way I can do kind of a bit of fine tweaking okay that's good there now if I hit slice turn off slice plane and I'm just going to select that that and these three here and then I'll drop back in my perspective view there we go Right then, this bit here I'm going to have to duplicate, yeah? So I'm just going to select them all, and then I'm going to use something called symmetry again. So S for symmetry. Come down here, and it should just be there. Now if we look, the problem is that it's done symmetry on everything, which I don't want. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to detach this, not as a clone or an element and suddenly we have this individual object just here yeah and the movement gizmo okay is in the same position as the boat was that's great we don't want it anywhere else really because we need to mirror it and that's right in the middle or use symmetry rather so how do we do that well again go to the symmetry tool which is the letter s there we go, and I'm going to click flip and get it on the Y axis in this case and then collapse it. So right click, convert to editable polygon. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to bridge all these polygons together. So I'll select them all, which I can do with the control A and hit bridge and oh, it's done that twisting thing. Well, we can get around that by doing them one at a time or we can click the little box here and you'll notice there's a twist and if we just mess around with the twist functions, it'll untwist it. There we go. So now we have this, like so. Okay, well, that's looking good. So let's move it down now into the boat. Now, if I want to get the gizmo, which is all the way down here, up here to where this is, an easy way to do it will be, I'll just adjust the sensitivity on my mouse, there we go. I'll go to my hierarchy tab, which is here, affect my pivot only and center it to object that's all I need to do now I'll bring that down into there and there we go we have that at the very front where it should be see how easy that was and now we're starting to get this looking a lot more like a Roman boat now I know as I've said before, that the back should be flat, but I made it curved anyway, and I'm going to go with this. So if anyone asks you why your rowing boat's curved at the back, tell them that it's a Shetland version. Unless they're from the Shetland Islands, in which case tell them it's an Orkney version. Okay? That way neither of us will look silly, especially me. Now, on the underside of this, 
Okay, I think what might be a good idea is maybe just to have something kind of supporting it a bit. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a box using Auto Grid and I'm just going to draw it out like that. And then I'm going to bring it up just a tiny bit. You see how little that is? It's really small. Yeah? Right click out. Then I'm going to do a right click, convert to editable poly. Then I'm going to select this top polygon and just move it straight up. And then if I click twice just here, what it's done is, I'm going to hit F3 so you can see it, it selected the polygon that we can't see. And because we don't want it, I'm just going to hit delete. Then hit F3 again. I'm going to hit the top polygon here and just use my scale tool. Remember, we've done this a lot. And I'm just scaling it straight down on the z-axis like that. Okay, that's good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my move tool and I'm going to move it up until it just starts disappearing into there. And when it does, I'm going to hit delete to get rid of my top polygon. And that's done. Alright. Now we have a few objects now that make up our boat. When it comes down to it, we have this, we have the doors, we have all these handles and things. So it's time to add them all together. So I'm going to attach that. And our seat's already attached, but I'm going to attach this and that. There we go. And I just want to get an idea of what it's going to look like when it's lying in water. So I'm just going to quickly make a plane, turn off auto grid. And yeah, that's not bad. That's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so I'm going to push this down again. Just delete that. Okay, so I think just looking at the scale of this and going around it, I mean, it's a big. Kind of a big boat, isn't it? Let's just uh, have a look at the scale options, see what it's like if it's a bit smaller. I think I'm going to make it there, about that size. And because I've scaled it, okay, if I'd only scaled it on one or two axes, I'd do an X-form reset. But because I've scaled it on all the axes at once, I don't really need to. You can still do one anyway if you want. Just go to your modify panel and just throw it on X-form like that. And then right-click and convert to Edgeable Poly. You know, I'm not going to stop you, but uh, no, that looks okay. Now, I think it's probably time that we started making some oars. So we'll do that in the next section, and until then, yar. Remember, you're a great pirate, and we send you all our love and best feelings. And if you've got any questions and need to know how anything's done, you just get in touch with us either via the website, via our Discord, via our Facebook, or, you know, throw a message in a bottle and chuck it in the sea. And until we see you next time, ta-ta for now. Bye-bye, my loves.